The Lions take on the Michigan State Spartans in a Big Ten showdown right here on NBC. Go Penn State. State. Right. Penn State fans are loyal and loud, and <laughs> our Harry Smith is loyal and loud. Traveled to Happy Valley, Pennsylvania to learn about the origins of their most famous chant. Harry, good morning. We have all heard so much yeah. about the story, and we can't wait. Well, think about it, because you have a lot of Penn State in your family, family, right? Penn State. What's the, how does the cheer go? We are. And then they say, Penn, Penn State. State. Right. Okay, so that's a great cheer. Everybody knows it. Is there an extra connection to history in this story? Well, let's find out. For as long as anyone can remember, Penn State has been a football powerhouse. And their home field, Beaver Stadium, wide, black, 11 on the energy map. What is it like on a football Saturday when this place is packed? It's electric. Uh, you stand on the field, especially during the whiteout, you can't hear the person next to you. A whiteout, a night game, where all the fans wear white. We'll put me right out here in the end zone. Welcome back to Beaver Stadium! It's especially loud when cheerleader Ben Malloy gets on the mic and the crowd chants... Fellow cheerleader Jordan Frank. Yeah, it's just incredible to have... 110 plus thousand people just all the same place doing the same thing. It's just, it's really beautiful. It's hard to believe it hasn't always been like this. When I first started going to school here, this was a relatively quiet stadium. So this is Penn State football and basketball play-by-play -play legend Steve Jones. <laughs> there wasn't the same excitement, and they were trying to get more juice into this place. Penn State cheerleaders in the 1970s figured the chant, we are Penn State, would unite and energize the crowd. It was not an immediate success. It was a struggle <laughs> for everybody to get involved in doing it. After several years, though, it caught on big time. I can be literally yeah. anywhere in the world, and, and it will never fail that somebody will, either an alumni or somebody knows that we are chat. What those cheerleaders did not know at the time is their words were echoing some remarkable school history. There's mythology. Yes. There's history. Yes. And then there is We Are Penn State. Right. In 1946, the Nittany Lions had two black players, Wally Triplett and Denny Hogarth. The team was scheduled to play at the University of Miami in segregated Florida. A team meeting was held. The decision unanimous. For teammates, we all do this, all we don't do this. We're not going to travel without them. We're not going to play the game without them. The Miami game was canceled. The next season, undefeated Penn State was invited to the Cotton Bowl. In Dallas, the bowl asked Penn State to leave its black players, Triplett and Hogarth, home. This time, All-American guard Steve Suey declared a meeting would not be necessary. He said, we're Penn State. At the Cotton Bowl capitulated. Triplett scored a key touchdown in the game. Is it important to connect that history from the 1940s with what people cheer here on Saturdays? It is because it's important to remember your history and understand that you had people on this campus that fought in an enlightened way and in the proper way that set the tone for decades to come. The modern day cheerleaders agree. So for me personally, as a black African American on the team, it's incredible to, to know that history and to carry on the history. Wally Triplett, the great player, he became the first black who was drafted into the National Football Player, the National Football League, not the first black player, the first one drafted, right? And there's a guy at Penn State, uh, Lou Prado, who is just this amazing historian of the school, and he's the one who really pulled a lot of these threads apart over the years. But one of the other things, once the uh, Cotton Bowl capitulated and said, okay, come, yeah. there was no place for the Penn State football team to stay. Mm -hmm. No hotel in Dallas in 1948 would allow a black player to enter. Uh, so they stayed at an old naval base north of town. It's such a powerful story. Do they share that with students? I mean, do the students at Penn State even know it? A lot of, a lot of them don't. And a lot of them, but there are a lot of Penn State grads in this building. Yeah. And they said, really? Yeah. I've never heard that before. It just shows you the importance yeah. of leadership and how you set the tone at the top. Right. Yeah.
It's a good story. Oh, Harry, come on. <laughs> and if you want to hear that chant today, you are in luck. Penn State plays Michigan State tonight at 7.30 Eastern on NBC, streaming on Peacock. You may hear Hallie Jackson screaming. You sure will. Outside. Look at my sister. Look at my dad. You'll hear all of them screaming. <laughs> and now they know a lot more about the yeah. school. All right, Harry, thank you so much you for that. Bet. It was great. Now time for the weekend weather forecast. Dylan's in for Al this morning. Hey, Dylan.